We have an Earth-directed solar storm that's going to sideswipe Earth. And some more flare activity is on the way. The stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun finally picks up in activity this week as we take a look at our Earth-facing disk. We do have a lot of regions in Earth view, but we'll get back to those in a minute. Meanwhile, take a look at this big coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone. It's been sending us a little bit of fast wind, but that's not all that much news. If you take a look just to the east of that, however, do you see that big long filament? We've been following this filament all the way across the Earth-facing disk. We were thinking, it gave us a couple of false starts. We we're thinking it was gonna launch, but finally, on the 4th, watch it there, whoosh! Do you see that? It looks like it's going to go west of Earth mainly, but because we have the fast wind from this coronal hole that's just to the west of that, it may actually deflect this uh, solar storm into the path of Earth. So we could get a glancing blow sometime around the 7th. That's what the NASA models look like, but it's kind of hard to tell. We'll talk more about that later. Meanwhile, as we take a look at a couple of the regions in the south, we've got region 3323 and 3327. These are big flare players, and we are watching them right now to see whether or not they're going to start really ramping up activity. Meanwhile, that solar flux is going to ramp up, and we've got more regions on the sun's far side that have yet to rotate into view, so it looks like finally we're going to have some chances for aurora and possibly big flares. Switching to our M flare and radio blackout threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux over the last week, we really haven't been getting that much activity. We have popped a couple big M-class flares back on June 1st and on June 2nd, but since then, things have pretty much quieted down. You might have noticed oh, there's a lot less noise on the bands over the past few days, but this is not going to last. Radio blackouts are going to start coming back because we are having big flare players rotate back into Earth view and expect that noise floor to ramp up and the solar flux also to ramp up near the end of the week. So amateur radio operators, just get ready. On Earth's day side, it's going to be a bit more lively. Switching to our solar storm conditions, over the past week, things have been reasonably quiet. We've been hovering between unsettled conditions to even quiet conditions at times. We have bumped up a couple times to active conditions for just a short while. One of them was back on June 1st, and this was basically due to some fast solar wind that really wasn't all that fast or all that effective. So Aurora at high latitudes was kind of the name of the game, but nothing really down at mid latitudes. In fact, as we got this last little bump up from some fast solar wind from this coronal hole that's been passing through the Earth strike zone now. Well, again, we've only had a tiny bit of active conditions which brings aurora to high latitudes, but mid-latitude aurora photographers, you've been kind of having to do without. However, you might get a chance here with this glancing blow from the solar storm, not expecting all that much, but it could bump us up to active conditions, possibly minor storm conditions, if that fast wind blows this thing and deflects it more into Earth view, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, taking a closer look at that solar storm that was launched back on the 4th, we switched to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we take a look at that solar storm being launched, you can see it's launching off to the west, but it does look like it could clip Earth about midday on the 7th. We're not expecting a really impressive blow, but it could be enough to give us a little bit of aurora, especially at high latitudes and possibly a chance down at mid-latitudes. Now, also, if that fast solar wind from that coronal hole ends up deflecting the structure further into Earth, it could be a bigger blow than what we might have expected. So it's going to be kind of hard to tell, but aurora photographers, if you're dedicated, you might actually get a chance for some more aurora starting on the 7th. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? 
Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the Sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the Sun just a tiny bit from the side. And when we take a look at the view from Stereo A, you can see in the west that long filament, and you can actually watch it erupt slowly. That is the filament that actually launched that solar storm that looks like it's going to go west of Earth, but may graze us but right around the 7th. So that should get you oriented. And if you look past that to the east, you can see uh, two big bands, both in the north and in the south. These are a lot of active regions that are going to be rotating into view. In fact, when we take a look at the HMI helioseismology far side viewer, we can see a lot of dark regions, especially in the north. These are regions that look like they're going to be rotating into view here in about four days or so, and that could bring some real activity, including big flares and possibly more solar storm chances in the future. So next week, things in terms of activity could really ramp up. Switching to our moon and meteors, we are now coming out of our strawberry moon on our way to a third quarter, and by the 11th, the moon will be about 63% illuminated. So, Unite Sky Watchers, if you want to catch some aurora or some dim objects in the sky, well, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that Earth-directed solar storm that's going to give us a glancing blow starting around midday on the 7th. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting minor storm conditions, but we have up to about a 20% chance of a major storm. Now, activity could easily start right at, like I said, midday on the 7th, and we could ramp up to about the 8th and then have aurora clear in through the 9th before things begin to settle down. So at high latitudes, it should be a good show. Now at mid latitudes, however, NOAA's only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10% chance of a minor storm. Again, the main time will be right around the 8th, but things should not last nearly as long. So aurora photographers, if you're at mid latitudes, well, only if you're dedicated should you bother to chase. Switching to your solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, well, we do have quite a few active regions in Earth view, and that is boosting that solar flux. We are sitting in the 160s to 170s range, and this means good radio propagation on Earth's day side. The sad thing is that we do have moderate noise on the bands right now. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of M-class flares at an R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and as well as a 10% chance of X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout, and these conditions will easily extend through the rest of the five days here and possibly into next week because we have even more big flare players that are going to rotate into Earth view. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're going to have to deal with periodic disruptions on Earth's day side on the bands with these radio blackouts, and if you are a GPS user, just understand, especially near dawn and near dusk, anywhere in that region, you can get GPS disruptions disruptions as well from these radio blackouts. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Well, we do have some flare activity this week, and that does mean that we are on alert when it comes to radiation storms. The good thing is, however, that we don't have any active radiation storms right now. In fact, we're sitting at the D1 normal range, and that is really where we should continue to be over the course of this week. We are having quiet conditions at the S0 level, so that is not a problem for any of you frequent flyers. However, because of the activity, NOAA is giving us about a 10% chance of an S1 to S2 level radio uh, uh, solar radiation storm. So if you are a pilot, be sure to check those ICAO advisories quite often. And if you are a drone pilot, be aware that there are radiation storms that could affect you if you happen to be crossing through the poles. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up in activity. We do have a partly Earth-directed solar storm that looks to graze Earth to the west about midday on the 7th. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a show. Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we do have a couple big flare players in Earth view. These are regions 3323 and 3327, and these regions are uh, have, do have big flare potential, so we could be seeing more radio blackouts here over this next week, but with moderate noise on the bands, at least your radio propagation is staying in the good range because solar flux continues to be high. 
And now GPS users, well, you know, things aren't too bad for you. We have some radio blackouts that could give you some issues, especially near dawn and near dusk. And we also have a little bit of aurora, but that aurora should kind of stay up at high latitudes. So overall, things should be pretty good. But this week, you definitely need to stay vigilant. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.